what's going on guys this is Riggs from clashing ffs bringing you the week five league recap cwo premiere you guys already know uh before we jump into the attacks from all of the highlighted wars from week five we are going to go ahead and break down the standings and just a reminder for any of you guys watching this that have not seen the other league recaps we do not have two conferences here in season three we have eight divisions so these are not in any particular order starting off at the top in the dragon division we have gunma samurai and grumpy old men both tied for first place uh, both sitting at four and one and both of these clans also picked up a win in week five uh, down in third place, we have Reddit Viper sitting at two and three. They picked up a win this weekend as they were scheduled to war, uh, meet the Kings who unfortunately dropped out a couple weeks ago. So Reddit Viper did get a default bye week win. And in fourth place, we have Valar Mogulis sitting at 0 and five, still searching for their first win on the season. In the Pekka division, we have Varhai Saleke coming out of nowhere, all in first place at 4-1. We have North Awakens, who unfortunately took a loss in Week 5. They're sitting at 3-2. And, and Dragon Rejects gaining a little bit of ground. Uh, with, North, with North Awakens losing, Dragon Rejects picking up a huge win in Week 5. They are also now at 3-2 and two with a winning record, uh, currently with a winning record. And we have Kornfeld, who's sitting at 1-4, and four, who did suffer a loss against From Molten Lava. In the Baby Dragon Division, we have Swarm Synergy just cruising right along, guys. They have won their last four wars straight. They are sitting at 4-1, and one, all alone in first place. As you see, the second place uh, clan, uh, Gotoborg's Krieger. They are in second place, but they're sitting at two and three uh, with the losing record. But they also picked up a huge win this weekend here in week five. Uh, Assassin's Core is sitting at one and four, tied in last place uh, with BD Unbeatables, who is also at one and four. And BD Unbeatables picking up their first win of the season uh, in week five. We will go ahead and take a look at uh, their war that they had, a must-see attack. Uh, and in the minor division, we have Forbidden. As you guys know, the only undefeated clan through the first five weeks, sitting at 5-0. and oh. Huge shout out to Forbidden, uh, putting up solid numbers week after week. We have One Hive Genesis right behind them. They are one war behind. They are sitting at 4-1, and one, but all alone in second place. And we have Dark Avengers and Nottingham. Like we've always said, the minor division is is very close and very competitive so we have dark avengers and nottingham both tied technically for last place both of these clans with winning records at three and two and now we'll go ahead and take a look at the next four groups all right guys these are the next four divisions that we're going to be covering starting off with the wall breaker division we have war addicts all alone in first place sitting at four and one also picking up a win uh, in week five as well. Uh, we have FYSB, Unius Exercitus, and Emphatic Fury all tied. I don't know if they're tied for second place or if they're tied for last place, but they do all have a tie uh, record, win-loss record at two and three. A simple win for one of these clans and a loss for the other will completely flip this division around. Uh, so only time will tell how the wall breaker division is going to pan out as the season goes on. In the balloon division, we have bad intentions. Bad intentions all alone in first place, also sitting at four and one. And they also picked up a huge win over the weekend. Uh, we have Dark Looter X sitting at three and two, who suffered a loss in week five. And we have CLC Hog Wars in third place. They are at one and four, also taking a loss uh, in week five. And we have Axu Something sitting at 0 and five, uh, still looking for their first win here in season three. In the wizard in the wizard division, we have TWSS 
and above and beyond, both tied in first place, both these clans sitting at three and two. And we have CWC Brawlers, who also picked up a win here in week five. They are at two and three. And like we mentioned earlier, uh, Meet the Kings unfortunately dropped out a couple weeks ago. So they will be taking losses uh, through the rest of the season. They are not going to be replaced. Uh, we have the Healer Division, King Jeffrey, and from Molten Lava, both tied for first place. Uh, both these clans are sitting at three and two. And both of these clans also picked up wins here in week five. We have Art of War and Gahazi Bomber 2, both tied uh, for last place. Both these clans sitting at two and three. So again, a win and a loss for each of these clans can completely flip the Hero Division around. A division you definitely want to pay close attention to throughout the remainder of the season. Now that we have the standings out of the way, let's go ahead and check out some incredible attacks and some wars we have highlighted in week five. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump in to the highlighted wars. I do have 12 of them to share with you guys today and a little different from the other league recaps to make it easier for your viewing pleasure look down in the description below as you guys saw it in the title of this video i do have timestamps, so if there's certain wars that you want to hear of the highlights on you can go ahead and scroll through if you look at the timestamps for each one of the wars that we're going to be showing you guys today having said that kj on a streak right now, guys, they have won the last three wars in a row and an eight-star victory over North Awakens, the final 85 to 77. Uh, King Jeffrey did have two 10v10s this war. Uh, they also went three for seven on their 10v11, so they did leave one of North Awakens Town Hall 11s only one starred. But they went 8 for 8 on their dips. Absolutely huge. The, the ball is always in your court when you go perfect on those dips. North Awakens has been very solid throughout the season. Uh, they definitely had a tough war this time around. Again, only putting up 77 stars. They unfortunately did not have a 10v10. And they struggled 10v11 as well, only going 2 for 8. And on their dips, they did have four dip fills. Uh, like I just said, it was an off war for them, but I guarantee you they're going to bounce back. They are a very strong clan, but KJ definitely took advantage of it. And nevertheless, getting an eight star victory, absolutely huge and continuing their win streak uh, now at three wars in a row. And congratulations to them on this big victory. All right, next up we have uh, Dragon Rejects who took on Art of War and what was a close war, but Dragon Rejects coming away with the win, uh, the final, 82 to 81, and Dragon Rejects had a slow start to the season, but they have very quickly started stringing some wins together, and they did it here in week five. This is how they did it. Uh, they had two 10v10 triples. Uh, there were a couple wars where they, where they didn't have any 10v10s. So we're starting to see those 10v10 triples come around and putting them in a very good spot to win these wars because we know they can dip. They did go 7 for 8, only having one dip fail. Not a big deal. Uh, where they really shined in this war, even more so uh, than the 10v10s, was their 10v11s going 4 for 9. I mean, at this point in time, if you can clear all four of those 11s with your Town Hall 10s, it puts you in great shape and just adds that much more pressure uh, onto the enemy clan. So they went four for nine, well, very well hitting above the league average. Clearing at this point in time is hitting above the league average. They went four for nine. Art of War, at the end of the day, did not have a bad war. They also put up a uh, solid uh, two 10v10s, and they also cleared 10v11s, but it took them seven more tries in order to do so. Uh, they went four for 16, so they threw a lot of attacks in trying to clear the 11s. At the end of the day, they did get it done, however. Uh, they did have two dip fails, and at, at, if you look at it, both clans had two 10v10s. Both clans cleared 11s on their hit-ups. 
uh, Dragon Rejects only having one dip fail, Art of War having two. That is how close this war was, you guys. Uh, but like I said, Dragon Rejects, congratulations to them. Walking away, a one-star victory, the final, 82 to 81. And we'll have to see what happens with each of these clans in the future. But Dragon Rejects definitely looking hot uh, coming out of Week 5 with a solid victory over Art of War. All right, next up, guys, we have Varhai Seleke. To many people's surprise, not Varhai Seleke. They've been solid. But Gahazi Bomber 2, uh, they've lost three wars in a row now, starting off the season extra hot. Uh, not sure what's going on. Uh, this was a 40 v 40. I'm not sure how deep the uh, Gahazi Bomber 2's roster is, but they went ahead and agreed to do this 40 v 40. And it wasn't so much a heavy breakdown. Uh, there were still only uh, four Town Hall 11s on the map, but there were 22 Town Hall 9s. So there was a bunch of Town Hall 9s on the map in this 40v40 breakdown. But we have our High Seleke guys walking away with the win. Two weeks in a row now walking away uh, with the win doing these 40v40s. The final 111 to 110 and we know Gahazi Bomber to uh, they left or they did all their attacks and there was still something like three or four hours left in war not sure if that was uh, just a time zone issue uh, as they are out of Japan but uh, Vahai Seleke it put them in that favor knowing what they had to do in order to get to 110 stars all right real quick we'll go ahead and break down the stats we had Vahai Seleke getting a 10v10 triple this war and oh and the breakdown I forgot to mention the exact breakdown was 4-12-22 that was the breakdown uh, they had one 10v10 triple they went four for 13 on their hit up so they did clear and they were they were put in a very good spot going eight for eight uh, on their dips. So big shout out to Verhai Seleke's Town Hall 11s uh, escaping without a single dip fail. Gahazi Bomber 2 had two 10v10 triples this war. Uh, the two categories where they fell short, guys, is they went three for 18 on their hit ups. So definitely have to improve there. And they had one dip fail. Again, not the end of the world having a dip fail. It's going to happen. But when a clan goes perfect on the other side of the map, again, adding that much more pressure and putting Varhai Seleke in a beautiful spot, and they took advantage of it. Uh, they had their 10v10, cleared the 11s. They deserve the win, walking away with a one-star victory. The final again, guys, 111 to 110. All right, next up... Not sure what was going to happen with this war, uh, as many people were predicting that there could have been an upset in Dark Looter X's favor. Again, Forbidden, uh, at this point in time, guys, is still undefeated, and they walked away with the victory here in Week 5, the final. A four-star victory, guys, for Forbidden. 86 to 82 was the final and yet again dark looter x starting off the war just a couple hours in picking up two 10 v 10s thinking that was going to shake up forbidden uh again adding pressure onto them forbidden answered back uh they went ahead and had three 10 v 10 triples this war and this was the absolute money maker right here guys not hitting above the league average this was the highest hit rate for 10 v 11 here in week five, possibly tied, I believe it's tied for the season, going four for six on their hit ups, only having two fails uh, on their hit ups 10 v 11. And in their dip game, they went seven for eight, again, only having one dip fail. Dark Looter X also had three 10 v 10s this war, uh, so uh, they were tied uh, in that category. Uh, they did go 3 for 13 on their hit up, so one of those 11s, uh, they were not able to clear with their Town Hall 10s. And they went 4 for 6 on their dip, so they, you know, they did try for that 11 v 11 opportunity. Unfortunately, did not get it. Uh, they have, they do have a couple 11 v 11 triples so far on the season, but it did not happen against Forbidden. 
Again, going four for six, having those two dip fails. And Forbidden walking away, guys, a, a uh, four-star victory, the final 86 to 82. Uh, Dark Looter X, still a very formidable, formidable clan, one of the best clans in the league. However, Forbidden is on a hot streak right now, have not given up a single loss on the season. And congratulations to them for walking away with the victory. All right, guys, as you guys are watching this replay, we have an, a, another 11v11 triple from none other than Swarm Synergy. Uh, this war was spun a little heavier than the default traditional breakdown uh, in Premiere. Uh, the breakdown of this war was 4-12-14, so they still ran the four Town Hall 11s, but there were two extra Town Hall 10s on the map. Uh, so we have Swarm Synergy guys yet again going five, uh, going, uh, they went five for 18 on their 10 V10s. You heard it. Five 10 V10 triples this war, uh, on their hit ups going two for six. Uh, they went 11 for 10 in, or they, on their 11 V10 dip game, they went four for four hitting at a hundred percent. And of course, as you guys see it on your screen, picking up an 11 v 11 triple fysb i don't think i mentioned the the the, the final to the war uh the final score was 83 to 79 so swarm synergy picking up a strong four star victory over fysb so fysb they i mean they still played a decent war where they fell flat guys were in two departments First one, they did not have a 10v10 triple this war. Not sure what happened. We do know that they've uh, put up five 10v10s before as well, but they were not able to uh, f figure out Swarm Synergy's bases. Again, going uh, without a 10v10 triple and going one for 16 on their 10v11s. A lot of these were very, very close, guys. They were trying to tweak attacks. That's why they kept sending these uh, Town Hall 10 hits to these 11s, must have lost track, but they ate up 16 uh, attempts, only one of them getting cleared uh, with their Town Hall 10s. Uh, they did go six for seven on their dip game, but FYSB also had an 11v11 triple. And uh, real quick, if you guys watched the prediction video, I do have that attack recorded. If you haven't seen it already, go ahead and check it out. But it is on the prediction video, uh, FYSB's 11v11. So they still play a decent war, but they did not, they were not able to get a 10v10 triple. And that's where they fell flat. Swarm Synergy, huge shout out, 5 10v10s winning 83 to 79. All right, guys, next up, this was the absolute closest war right here. And we knew this war was going to be close, guys. Gunma Samurai uh, took on above and beyond. And what an incredible war this was. The final 83 to 83 in Gunma Samurai's favor. Many people were not sure exactly how this war uh, was going to end. It literally could have gone to either one of these clans. Both of these clans have been playing strong. Uh, the losses they have have been against very, very tough clans. Uh, but Gunma Samurai getting the victory on a tie and winning uh, just over 0.3% in total destruction. That is how close this war was, you guys. Okay, so... Uh, checking out the stats, we have Gunma Samurai who picked up a 10v10 triple this war. Shout out to them. They went 3 for 13 on their 10v11 game. And Above and Beyond went 3 for 10, so they're very, very similar there. And we have Above and Beyond who also had a 10v10 triple this war. On their dips, uh, we have Gunma Samurai who had one more successful dip. Uh, they went 7 for 8, only having one fail. Above and Beyond had those, uh, they had to have a couple, uh, 11 v 11 attempts. They went six for seven. So that is what decided the war, you guys. Uh, again, 83 to 83 was the final. A very, very close war. And we know how strong both of these clans have been, uh, throughout the season. 
Uh, they have suffered a couple losses, but uh, very, very familiar, very, very strong looking. And like I said, it was a very, very close war. And both of these clans could have won this war. And uh, like I already said, ending in a tie could not have been any closer, you guys. But again, ending in Gun Noir Samurai's favor. And uh, what you guys are watching on your screen right now was a beautiful uh, Lalo done by, well, we'll call him number 12. Uh, a beautiful queen charge Lalo, as we're going to see it going to be ending here in just a few seconds. Uh, and again, above and beyond also had a 10v10 triple this war. Uh, so do not count them out. Uh, I know there has been a lot of hype. They start off the season very, very hot, have suffered a couple losses, but they are still looking very, very strong going into week six, you guys. All right. So that's going to do it for that war. Uh, next up, we have... OHG who took on Axu something and unfortunately the struggles are continuing for Axu something not sure what is going on we know that they are a good clan but are still searching after week five for their first win on the season bring the record uh, to 0 and 5 heading into week six however OHG still looking strong uh, the final to this war you guys 85 to 82 OHG with a three-star victory over Axie something. We'll go ahead and break down the stats for you guys real quick. Uh, OHG, I know last week they were not able to put up a 10v10 triple. Uh, the clan seemed very, very confident that they were going to shake that off. As we know that they've been putting up anywhere from one to three 10v10s each war. This war was no exception. They had two 10v10 triples. Uh, they went three for 10 on their hit ups and they went yet again perfect on their dips, going seven for seven. Again, they, uh, their tens were not able to double one of actually something's 11s. So that's where that other 11 hit went. 11 v 11 attempt, uh, were able to secure the two star. Actually, something, however, were not able to get a 10 v 10 this war, but. Uh, something that they can build off of going into week six. They went four for 11 on their hit ups, on their 10 v 11 hit ups. So they were able to clear. So again, you clear those 11s, you're hitting above the league average. Uh, on their dip game, they had two dip fails. So between the two dip fails and not being able to put up a 10 v 10, OHG grabbing two 10 v 10s. That was the three stars right there. OHG continuing their hot streak. Uh, they are, that puts them at four and one now on the season. Congratulations to them. All right, guys, next war that we're going to be highlighting is CWC Brawlers who took on Valar Mugulis and I mean, very similar to Axu something. Uh, they are also 0 and 5 on the season and just having that buy forever affiliation there, there was a lot of hype behind Valar Mugulis starting off as they, you know, coming into the season, being new to the season uh, here in CWL Premier Season 3. Not sure what exactly is going on. As you guys see the stats, do not know what happened. You guys understand in a second once I get to what Val Valar Mugulis did this war and something they can build off of. First, we'll go ahead and cover uh, CWC Brawler stats. Uh, I'm kind of bouncing around 84 to 83 was the final CWC brawlers getting a one star victory. They, uh, CWC brawlers did have a 10 v 10 triple this war. Uh, so good job to them getting a 10 v 10. Uh, they were able to clear all the 11s with their town hall 10s. It took them 16 tries, but they were still able to get it done. Uh, edging out those, you know, getting those extra stars, only having one dip fail going seven for eight. This is the funky stat right here, guys, that I'm telling you guys, uh, you know, just a little bit ago. Valar Mugulis, guys, four 10v10s this war, four 10v10s. How did they lose? Uh, CWC Brawlers only had one. This is what happened right here. The 10v11 guy, the 10v11 game and how crucial it is. Uh, only able to clear two of their 11s. 
uh, going two for 13 on those hit-ups. Definitely have to improve that. If they cleared the 11s, they would have had a one-star victory this war uh, and wouldn't have had to send so many 11s in these 11v11 attempts trying to clear uh, because on their dips, they went five for six. So only had six of those opportunities. Uh, two of their 11s went to clear uh, the, where the 10s couldn't. Uh, so they still had a dip fail. Uh, they had five successful dips having that one dip fail. So they had a huge opportunity this war. We're not able to capitalize on it. Still do not count them out. I know they're going to be getting wins this season. It's just a matter of can they string everything together. But getting four 10v10s uh, in this war is definitely something to build off of going into week six. All right, next up, moving right along here. Just got a few more wars to cover, you guys. Uh, we have War Addicts who took on Assassin Score. War Addicts walking away with a two-star victory, the final, 84 to 82. Uh, War Addicts are now 4-1 and one on the season, looking very strong going into week six. Uh, Assassin's Core did get their first victory uh, back in week four, uh, so definitely were looking strong. They also went perfect on their dips back in week four. And they also went perfect on their dips here in week five. Definitely something to build off of. They had a 10v10 uh, back in week four. However, they were not able to get a 10v10 uh, this time around. Where Assassin's Core has to improve, and if they do improve, they will start getting more wins, is their hit-ups, just like many other clans in the exact same boat. Uh, they went three for 18. So they still left 111. Uh, uncleared by their 10s and in 18 attempts. So they ate up most of their Town Hall 10 attacks uh, trying to get uh, these 11s doubled. But like I said, uh, something else that they, you know, something else they can build off of is going perfect on dips now two weeks in a row. Okay, War Addicts. Two 10v10 triples this war. Huge shout out to War Addicts. Uh, I know they went a couple weeks uh, without a 10v10, and I know they had four 10v10s back in week one, uh, so it looks like they are finding their stride again, picking up two of this war. Uh, their 10v11 game, uh, similar to Assassin's Core, not quite as many attempts, but still only had uh, three of the 11s doubled by their Town Hall 10s, and they went seven for eight on their dips, only having one dip fail. So still looking very strong, still solid numbers. I mean, both these clans can, without a doubt, improve their 10v11 game. Uh, but all in all, the dip game was hot. The 10v10s were hot for War Addicts. Uh, so definitely something that Assassin's Core can build off of. And War Addicts just needs to continue doing what they're doing and picking up these wins 4 for 1 in first place in their division. Okay, next up we have BD Unbeatables who took on Emphatic Fury and in or for week five, unfortunately, we're, we were not able to do a prediction video. But I will tell you right now, in that prediction video, I would have picked Emphatic Fury. I would have lost that prediction, you guys. BD Unbeatables walking away with a one-star victory, the final, 86 to 85. So not only picking up their first win of the season, but taking down a monster clan like Emphatic Fury, who has, well, they've kind of been hot and cold, but they've been, they've been faced, they have not had an easy schedule. They've been facing some very, very tough clans and Emphatic Fury has been rocking uh, their dips just like they did this war. I'll go ahead and cover BD Unbeatable stats first uh, real quick. BD Unbeatables picking up two 10v10 triples this war. We know they have the capability of getting 10v10s. They have not had two yet on the season. This was the first war. So definitely giving them momentum going into week six, you guys. Not only beating Emphatic Fury, but doing it in style, picking up two 10v10s. And they also were able to clear all of Emphatic Fury's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. And this was the moneymaker right here, you guys. 
going eight for eight on their dips, hitting at 100%. So they have all kinds of uh, momentum going into week six. These stats right here, two 10v10s clearing the 11s uh, with their 10s and going 100% on their dips, that is a very solid war. And you can see it uh, putting up 86 stars. Emphatic Fury also picking up two 10v10s. Like I said, they are a very, very strong clan uh, despite what their record is right now as they are sitting at two and three. But they still put up two 10v10 triples this war. They also cleared... Uh, all of BD and Beatable's 11s with their Town Hall 10s, and doing it in one less attack, uh, they went 4 for 12. Where they lost this war, you guys, where, where what has been their strong suit, I believe they went 3 or 4 weeks straight, or at least 3 weeks straight without a dip fail, they went 7 for 8. That was the only, if they went 8 for 8 on their dips, this would have ended in a tie. So both these clans looking very strong going into week 6. Congratulations to BD and Beatables picking up their first win of the season here in week five. All right, next up, uh, very similar to the war that you know we were just talking about, uh, going back to the prediction videos that we're doing, I guarantee you, the majority of us would have picked uh, Unius Exercitus in the prediction video uh, to beat uh, Gotoborg's Krieger. However, we would have been wrong in that war as well. Go to Borg's Kriga, the Swedish Giants, getting a three-star victory over UE, the final, 82 to 79, very, very solid. And, and what was surprising is Go to Borg's Kriga, the two wins they have now on the season, their first victory was against Above and Beyond, a clan that pretty much nobody thought, even the Pickums, no one thought uh, Goldberg's Krieger would have been able to beat, of a, a beat above and beyond. They did. Same thing here. We know UE has been putting up very solid numbers also throughout the season, but they fell to Goldberg's Krieger again, the final 82 to 79. The stats uh, Goldberg's Krieger picking up a 10v10 triple. Congratulations to them. Uh, they where they have been struggling throughout the season pretty much from start to finish uh, so far here through week five is their hit ups they have to improve and I guarantee you those hit ups start to improve they will start seeing more wins in the win column they did uh, go three for 13 their dip game they went six for eight so they did have two dip fills not the best definitely not the worst but something that they can improve on uh, so those were uh, their stats. Unius Exercitus, unfortunately, not sure what happened, but they did not have a 10v10 triple this war, something that has been their strong suit throughout the season, picking up anywhere from two to three 10v10s each war, uh, but they were not able to get a 10v10, and they cleared three out of the four Town Hall 11s on the Gotoborg's Krieger side. Uh, they went three for six. And where they fell short is they went five for seven in the dip game. Uh, but still, very, very strong clan. Best of luck to both of these clans going into uh, week six. And shout out to Gotoborg's Krieger for taking down uh, a very strong clan like UE. Best Again, best of luck to both these clans going into week six. Okay, the last matchup that we're going to be covering, you guys, we have Grumpy Old Men who took on... TWSS, GOM walking away with the victory, a two-star victory, uh, nevertheless, 83 to 81 was the final, and that is a three-war win streak now for Grumpy Old Men. This is how they did it, you guys. Uh, where they've really been performing uh, as the season has been continuing on is their uh, 10v10s, picking up Three this war. Very, very solid. Uh, huge shout out to uh, Grumpy Old Man getting three 10v10s uh, this war. On their hit ups, they went three for nine. Not the best. Definitely not the worst. Uh, but a stat that they can improve on. And they went 11, or they went on their 11v10 game, they went seven for eight, only having one dip fail. Uh, so still, uh, they still did a very good job there. Okay. Uh, TWSS, they also had two 10v10 triples this war. Uh, back in week one, 
TWSS put up three. Uh, the next three weeks, TWSS was not able to get a 10v10 triple. However, they did have two uh, this war against Grumpy Old Men. So th they took the loss, but something they can build off of going into week six. Uh, where they really need to improve is uh, their hit-ups. Not sure exactly what happened, uh, but they were only able to clear two out of the four Town Hall 11s on the grumpy old men's side with their hit-ups. And their dip game was the same. They went seven for eight. We have, we do know that TWSS has been very, very successful on their dip game. So only having one dip fail, definitely not the end of the world. Uh, but getting those 10v10 triples, again, something they can build off of, uh, still a very, very strong clan. And Grumpy Old Men is just on a hot streak right now, beating clans uh, left and right. Again, a three-war win streak. Congratulations uh, to Grumpy Old Men for taking down a very, very strong uh, TWSS. All right, guys. Well, that is going to wrap it up for the week five CWO Premier League recap. I really hope you enjoyed all the attacks featured, all the highlighted wars, the stats, the standings, all that good stuff. What you're looking at right now is all the matchups going down this weekend in week six. In case you missed it, make sure you check out the prediction video. I will have a link to that at the very end of this video. So make sure you guys check that out in case you missed it. And it's where we dig a little bit deeper into each one of these matchups. And if you guys like the video, make sure you like it. Leave any comments, questions, or concerns down in the comment section below. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. As always... This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and best of luck to all clans warring this weekend, and I'll see you in the very next video.